Look up at the night sky and picture the familiar planets orbiting our sun on a neat flat disk. Now tilt your gaze straight up, perpendicular to that disk, into territory maps rarely bother to draw. Somewhere above your head, invisible winds roar past the borders of the solar system at hundreds of kilometers per second. Vast magnetic cliffs bend cosmic rays and ghost-white rivers of plasma curl around us like smoke from a cosmic campfire. Tilt your gaze straight down and you dive through a sea of dark matter, past lurking rogue worlds and ancient debris older than Earth. Seen from the side, the solar system is a tiny raft drifting through an ocean that has depth as well as width. And what scientists are finding in those vertical depths is changing how we see our place in the galaxy. In today's long-form voyage, we're leaving the comfort of the ecliptic plane to explore what really exists above and below the solar system. We'll follow the probes that pierce the sun's magnetic bubble, chase runaway stars through the galactic halo, and meet the strange forces hiding in the darkness beneath us. Stick around to the very end, because the last discovery may rewrite the timeline of life on Earth and hint at our future among the stars. 1. Reorienting the Solar System Most textbooks show the planets as if they were beads threaded on a tabletop string. That 2D picture is convenient but misleading. In reality, the ecliptic, the plane traced by Earth's orbit, is tilted about 60 degrees relative to the Milky Way's disk, and the Sun itself oscillates up and down through that disk every 32 million years or so. Up and down are defined by the galaxy's own gravitational mid-plane. Astronomers call those directions galactic north and galactic south. From our point of view, galactic north points roughly toward the constellation Coma Berenices, while galactic south lies behind the rich star clouds of Sculptor. Everything above us in that sense is really above. Outside the bright swarm of stars, toward the sparsely populated galactic halo. Everything below descends through thicker dust lanes, past warped spiral arms, toward the galaxy's underbelly. With that three-dimensional compass set, let's climb outward, layer by layer, starting at the sun's doorstep. 2. The Heliosphere, our astrophoric cocoon. Imagine the solar system wrapped in a giant, teardrop-shaped bubble called the heliosphere. Powered by the solar wind, a stream of charged particles blowing at about 400 kilometers per second, the heliosphere acts as a magnetic shield, deflecting 70% of the high-energy cosmic rays that would otherwise slam into Earth's atmosphere. In 2012, Voyager 1 poked through the bubble's outer skin at about 121 astronomical units. Voyager 2 followed in 2018 at 119 AU exiting at the opposite flank. Their instruments detected a sudden rise in galactic origin particles, confirming that the heliopause, the bubble's edge, is less a wall than a porous membrane. Above the ecliptic, the heliosphere's nose faces a stream of interstellar hydrogen drifting from galactic north. There, the bubble's bow shock crumples like the front of a speeding car in rain. Behind us, down in interstellar south, a hundred billion kilometer helio tail fans out like a comet's blue ghost, twisting under the magnetic pressure of the Milky Way. NASA's IBEX and the newer IMAP mission map this structure in energetic neutral atoms, painting a sky full of ribbon-like arcs. Evidence that the sun's bubble is not symmetrical, but dented, dented again, and forever reshaped by the external flow. Why does that matter? because changes in the heliosphere modulate the cosmic ray dose reaching Earth's surface, whispering into the chemistry of our climate and even the mutation rate of life. Step outside the bubble and the numbers spike. Step inside and the shield calms the storm. Already you can feel that above and below carry consequences. 3. The Local Interstellar Cloud and Local Bubble Once outside the heliopause, we sail into the local interstellar cloud, a wispy fog of hydrogen and helium, only 0.3 atoms per cubic centimeter, thousands of times thinner than the best vacuum on Earth. Voyager's plasma wave instrument caught faint whistles confirming the cloud's temperature, about 7,000 degrees Celsius, yet too diffuse to warm a dust grain. 
The real surprise came when astronomers stitched together ultraviolet observations from dozens of nearby stars. They realized the local cloud sits inside a larger cavity, the local bubble, roughly 1,000 light years across and carved by at least 15 ancient supernovae. Fly upward toward galactic north and the bubble walls brighten into knots of ionized calcium, glowing pink in H-alpha light. Those clumpy walls are like bricks in a cosmic cathedral, imprisoning us in hot, rarefied gas. Fly downward and you graze a protrusion called the local chimney, an opening that vents million-degree plasma into the galactic halo. In 2022, data from the Gaia satellite revealed shimmering tendrils, giant magnetic ropes rising out of the chimney like smoke from a bonfire. These ropes could channel cosmic rays preferentially from the halo straight toward the solar system, explaining directional anomalies recorded by balloon experiments over Antarctica. 4. Climbing into Galactic North, Halo, Fermi Bubbles and Stellar Streams Continue upward another thousand light years and the backdrop of bright stars thins. You're entering the Milky Way's thick disk, then its halo, a nearly spherical swarm of old metal-poor stars orbiting at crazy inclinations. In 2010, NASA's Fermi telescope discovered two gigantic lobes of gamma radiation, each 50,000 light-years tall, sprouting from the galaxy's center and reaching high above and below the disk. From our position 25,000 light-years out, we cut across the lower edge of the northern lobe, Astronomers still debate whether these Fermi bubbles were inflated by past spurts of the supermassive black hole or by starburst winds. Either way, they're a lighthouse advertising ancient violence. Glide farther into the halo and you meet rivers of stars. Tidal streams torn from dwarf galaxies consumed by the Milky Way. One of them, the Gaia Enceladus stream, flows overhead like a broken necklace. Its discovery in 2018 rewrote the Milky Way's family tree, proving that our galaxy grew by cannibalism. Hover long enough and you'll notice dark curtains where stars should be, gaps in the stream. These gaps betray invisible clumps of dark matter plowing through, each the mass of a globular cluster but entirely transparent. Above the solar system then, is not empty space but a battlefield where gravity sculpts stellar phantoms we can only infer. 5. Diving into Galactic South The Warp, Thick Disk and Cosmic Underbelly Now pitch downward, past the ecliptic, through the Sun's southern heliotail and out the chimney throat. Within 500 light years, the star density swells again. You're in the galaxy's midplane but keep falling and the disk itself begins to bend. Radio surveys show the Milky Way's outer arms sag like a warped vinyl record, dipping more than 3,000 light years below the mid-plane in the direction of Carina Sagittarius. The sun rides that ripple like a surfer cresting a wave, meaning the stars beneath us aren't arranged in a flat sheet, but in a twisted, flapping banner. Continue south another 2,000 light years and you pass through the thick disk home to stars 11 billion years old. Their chemical fingerprints, weak in metals but rich in alpha elements, suggest a time when supernovae erupted like firecrackers every few million years. Below, even that lurks the galaxy's underbelly. A sparsely lit zone haunted by hypervelocity stars shot out of the galactic center, possibly by close encounters with the central black hole. Some of these runaways travel 1,200 kilometers per second, fast enough to escape the Milky Way entirely. One, dubbed S5HVS1, darts beneath the solar system's plane on a trajectory that will carry it into intergalactic darkness within a million years. If you could hitch a ride, you'd see the Milky Way shrink into a glowing blade behind you and the sun's position would be lost in the glare. Six, the dark matter sea that surrounds us. All the visible wonders above and below still total only 16% of the galaxy's mass. The rest, dark matter, is an invisible ocean that neither emits nor absorbs light. Computer simulations predict a lumpy halo of dark matter subhalos, some as small as Earth's moon, swarming through the disk. When one of these clumps blunders near the solar system, 
it should tighten stellar orbits ever so slightly and possibly perturb the Oort cloud. Recently, the Gaia mission mapped subtle wobbles in a billion stars, hinting at unseen masses tugging from below the plane. Meanwhile, underground detectors on Earth wait for rare flashes of dark matter particles colliding with atomic nuclei, and Axion search experiments point radio antennas toward galactic north where the local density might be higher. If dark matter consists of wimps, then every second millions pass through your body from every direction, including straight up and straight down. You are, right now, a sieve in a cosmic waterfall, oblivious to the storm. Scientists dream of flying a detector far above the heliosphere into cleaner interstellar space to reduce noise and catch the elusive splash of dark matter rain. 7. Rogue Objects and the Oort Cloud Closer to home, both above and below the ecliptic lurk icy nomads, the Oort Cloud, a hypothetical sphere of trillions of comets extending halfway to the nearest star, has never been directly imaged yet its fingerprints streak the inner solar system whenever a long-period comet dives sunward. Models show the cloud is thicker toward galactic poles, puffed up by passing stars and tidal forces from the Milky Way. Above us, then, is a castle of frozen cliffs waiting to descend as spectacular comets. Below us, an even greater reservoir may hide dormant planetary cores ejected during the solar system's chaotic youth. Some simulations predict dozens of Mars-sized or smaller rogues still gravitationally tethered but orbiting thousands of astronomical unit beneath the plane. In 2017, astronomers spotted Oumuamua, the first confirmed interstellar visitor, approach from above the plane, tumbling like a cosmic shard. Two years later, Comet Borisov entered from below. Their steep trajectories are a reminder that the solar neighborhood is porous. Objects rain in from galactic heights, bringing clues to chemistry beyond the sun. 8. The Solar Oscillation and Mass Extinctions Every 32 million years the sun crosses the galactic midplane, plunging alternately above and below by up to 250 light years. Some paleontologists notice a faint rhythm in Earth's fossil record close to that period, a pulse of extinctions and cratering events. One hypothesis links the timing to increased comet showers whenever the sun pierces the dense disk, disturbing the Oort cloud. Another proposes that passing through disk-crowded dark matter filaments could heat Earth's core very slightly, triggering volcanic cataclysms. Evidence is far from conclusive, yet the idea that life's epochs might sink to our vertical bobbing adds dramatic tension to the next crossing, scheduled roughly 18 million years from now. Today, we hover about 20 light years above the mid-plane, climbing toward galactic north. In cosmic terms, we're at the crest of a roller coaster, poised to dive. 9. Cosmic rays, magnetic fields, and invisible weather. Above and below the solar system, magnetic fields twist like braids of smoke. The Milky Way's large-scale field follows the spiral arms, but leakage into the halo creates vertical filaments thousands of light years long. When supernova shockwaves slam into those filaments, they accelerate particles to near light speed, birthing cosmic rays that rain down on the heliosphere's roof. In 2021, the AMS-02 detector aboard the ISS logged an unexplained excess of anti-helium nuclei arriving preferentially from galactic south raising eyebrows about dark matter annihilation below the plane. Meanwhile, the Erosita X-ray telescope imaged twin bubbles of hot gas above and below the galaxy, cousins to the Fermi structures, but cooler and smaller. These Erosita bubbles may be another signature of star formation or black hole outbursts. They pressurize the halo, steer dust flows, and could squeeze the heliosphere enough to shrink our cosmic shield when we venture deeper into the millennia from now. 10. Future missions from solar orbiter to the interstellar probe. To truly understand the vertical dimension, we need eyes in the polar sky. ESA's solar orbiter has already tilted its orbit to see the sun's poles, key to modeling the heliotail's southern twist. 
NASA's proposed interstellar probe would launch in the 2030s, aiming to exit the heliosphere well above the ecliptic, fly through the northern flank of the local bubble, and send back direct samples of interstellar dust. Another concept, the Galactic Explorer, would deploy a fleet of CubeSats both above and below the plane to triangulate dark matter sub-halos via precision pulsar timing. Even ground-based arrays like the upcoming Square Kilometer Array will map neutral hydrogen 3D structure thousands of light years tall, revealing how gas fountains cycle material from the disk into the halo and back again. 11. The Grand Perspective, where up and down lose meaning. Picture the solar system as a grain of pollen adrift in a sunlit room. The light shaft is the Milky Way's disk, glittering with stars. Above and below that shaft, motes swim in turbulence too faint to see unless you squint. Dark matter, halo stars, rogue planets, clouds of plasma. Some motes fall back, others drift away forever. Yet all of them, and we with them, are embedded in an even larger structure the cosmic web. There, up and down vanish, gravity threads filaments in all directions, and galaxies hang like dew. Still, for a creature bound to a rotating rock, having a sense of vertical wonder can be liberating. It reminds us that maps are simplifications, that the universe is richer than any flat diagram, and that discovery often begins by looking above the frame. We've climbed from the sun's protective bubble into the turbulent halo, plunged beneath the warp disk, dodged rogue planets, skimmed dark matter seas, and surfaced with a new appreciation for the solar system's true habitat. Above and below are not empty margins. They are arenas where cosmic forces sculpt our past and whisper about our future. If you enjoyed this vertical voyage, consider liking, subscribing, and ringing the notification bell so you never miss our next Deep Space Odyssey. And tell me in the comments, which layer intrigued you most and where should we venture next? Until then, keep looking up and down because the universe is everywhere.